Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Speed here and today we're gonna be going over Nigma versus Team Secret. First thing I want to say is congrats to Nigma. It really was a absolute pleasure to watch your games. I'm really happy that they made it through, you know. It was funny, I was watching True Sight yesterday, and man, does True Sight just gets you in your feels, it really does. But uh I watched um them in the grand finals and man, just uh, I just love Curl. I don't know, there's something about him. Just such a lovely guy. So uh props to them, congrats to them uh for pulling it through and yeah. Hope to see more. All right, but in today's video, we're going to be looking at the game. Nigma actually popped off this game. We're going to be doing a quick draft analysis of the two teams, talk about the matchups, uh, why certain heroes are counters to the other heroes throughout this draft, and then we'll get into the gameplay and specifically follow ILTW's Gredocopter. Gyros are actually great. They taste really good. And let's get into the draft analysis. But before we do, click the like button. Of course, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. What are you doing? What are you doing? I mean, what are you doing? We literally post here every single day, new Dota content to help you get better at the game, and let's do it. But briefly, before we do, I just want to let you know about three website videos I just made. Three videos I'm very proud of, and videos that will help you get to your next rank. In particular, I made an ILTW new Ursa build video. So if you're looking to play Ursa, learn some tips about the safe lane, how to become a better dead lane safe lane player, if you're confused what that even means, you should go sign up to the website, check out that video. On top of that, I made a video, which is really funny. It was a great time where I watched a Herald match and did a replay analysis on that. And finally, last but not least, yes, this is all on the website. All fresh content, not going to come to YouTube. I made a Legend Luna replay analysis. So one of my students played a Luna game. I've been talking with him a lot about farming rotations, farming patterns, how to make moves around the map, how to use Ment properly uh, and, and better. And that video is going to be posted to the website as well so if you're interested in any of those videos they're going to be there also a lot of supporter content and offline content coming as well so go click the link down below subscribe today it really is worth it and i'll see you guys there starting off team seeker going with the snap fire even after getting nerfed 18 times in a row this hero is clearly valued as just such a reliable position four or even five due to the fact that you know Guys, I played it. If you haven't played Snapfire recently, it is nuts. When you max out the E and you medallion someone and E them, they actually take three-fourths of their HP when it's maxed out in the early game. I'm not kidding. You think I'm kidding? If they're a mildly low armor hero and you E them with a medallion on them, they just die. Then um, Nigma goes back with a response. This, honestly, in my opinion, has practically nothing, if not nothing, to do with Snapfire. I really mean that. Uh, it's not a response to Snap, in my opinion, at all. It's just them saying... These are two heroes that we want to play with. We want our Teamfight Mars and then our Pickoff Lion. Kuro has been playing quite a bit of Lion this tournament as well. The hero has been doing expertly. And so, yeah, I, I'm a big fan of it. Uh, these heroes do complement each other because, you know, they, they kind of do semi-different things in the fights. One is very single target. To be fair, Mars is sort of single target, but obviously a uh, Lion is fully single target other than the occasional double stun, which is super uncommon. It's usually not what you try to do. Um, Team Secret goes with the response TA. This is really common right now. Um, I don't really see it as a response to these heroes necessarily. I don't even think TA is necessarily good against Mars. I think it's fine against Lion. This is them kind of committing to a, a bit of a minus armor. And TA at this point in the meta is considered to be a very good first pick hero. Different teams are doing it. Reason being, she doesn't lose almost any lanes. She gives you a lot of map control, Roshan potential, vision on the map. TA is... is She's a very versatile hero. I don't think that's what people understand. I think sometimes people look at TA and they think like, oh, this is just like a cheesy mid hero that flash farms, gets Aegis, and then tries to end. But at like a pro level, when you're playing at this highest level, when you look at TA, it's kind of different. You look at her as like this mid lane carry that primarily is really good at providing number one vision. The vision that you get from traps is mad underrated by most players, especially TA players. And then the Roshan, which... You know, to be fair, people know that about TA, but it's a big deal. These pro games, Roshan is where the fights happen, and for good reason. Next up, we see an IO pick. Uh, Nigma just wanted to play fast-paced. IO Lion is also a classic combo because you set up, you hex, you reload in, bada bing, bada boom, you got your kills. Also, I like the fact that when Nigma picks IO, they already have control. I think people make the mistake of picking IO without control, and it's often just a bit of a disaster unless you all in on the heal strats, which is sometimes a little bit questionable, but Team Secret, they respond with the Ench. I do like the Ench pick here. The reason why I like the Ench pick here is because if you lane it against the Lion, right, assuming Lion is 5 and Ench is 4, and you're able to get a creep, Lion just feeds. It's sad. 
Lion against the big creep is just, it's miserable. You have mediocre movement speed with no armor and you just get destroyed. Same thing with Io. Like Io can't deal with a large creep. You know, some supports can, such as Marana, maybe Bane, uh, CM. These heroes can't, so it makes a lot of sense. You could just bully them out uh, and, and kind of take over the game. On top of that, these heroes are backliners. You want a frontliner? Okay, you pick Eng, right? Really nice frontliner here. Then we see the response big gyrocopter. Definitely a decent hero against their heroes. Magical damage against Eng. Rocket Barrage against TA. Missile against TA is also good. I wouldn't say Gyro is some like direct counter TA. I think they're really just hard committing on their strategy of AUE teamfight. Less so than, you know, counter picking here. I really don't believe they're counter picking as much as people might think. I think from my perspective that this is a lot more of them just sticking to what they want to do. And Team Secret's sort of doing that here. This is probably a bit more of a response pick. It lanes very well against Mars. Uh, line Mars is a very nasty combo. A lot of heroes struggle to lane it because you get stunned into a stun, into a hex, into a slow, and then you kind of just die. Uh, but Lone Druid doesn't really have that problem. They can pressure the bear quite a bit, but it's not as bad as, you know, actually dying. So I, I respect this response pick. It's also a good combo with Snapfire, just minus armor with the bear damage. It's good. It's also pretty good against Gyro. You don't die to his burst damage. It allows you to send in a bear. Like, for instance, a lot of heroes get kited by call down a missile. Lone Druid sort of does because you can put just put them on the bear, but it's a lot nicer. You don't get bursted by all of this burst damage, right? This is a very bursty team comp. Lone Druid tends to do well against that, and so I respect it. On top of that, you don't necessarily want some ultra greedy safe laner when you have TA, and so I, I like Lone Druid for that reason as well. And finally, last but not least, is Axe. Kind of weird, in my opinion. I guess they like the Blade Mail. I don't think he even gets the Blade Mail this game. No, he doesn't. He doesn't even get the Blade Mail this game, which is kind of funny. I like Blade Mail against Gyro. Uh, it's fine against Mars. I I don't know. It's like, it's a bit weird. I guess it's just a stun. Was like all the other stuns banned out? Sort of. Okay. So I think Team Secret kind of just wants a melee initiator. Really? Hyde got banned out. Slaughter got banned out. Nigma clearly knows that that's what they need. And they do. They have a bunch of like, sort of backline heroes besides Ench, but she doesn't have a stun, right? Usually it's not a direct stun, even if she has a centaur. So Axe kind of fills up that gap a little bit. I do like that, but I, I, I agree from Nigma's perspective that Axe is probably the worst out of all of them because how I see this is Nigma needs a little bit of burst. I mean, they do have snap ulti, but that's not really burst. Um, TA is like, it is kind of bursty with snap armor reduction, but it's like kind of hard to set that up. So I like these, I like these bands a lot more because these are like the armor reduction initiators that I think fit Team Secret a lot more. They're also like better frontliners in my opinion. Axe as a frontliner is kind of mad. The hero gets kited much easier because he doesn't have any disengage spell where Slaughter and Tide do. You see what I'm saying guys? And so when you have to be like the all-in frontliner, Axe is not really good at that. And I, I do get it from Team Secret, like Lone Druid can doesn't really need someone to frontline for him ta sometimes does and uh yeah razor great razor pick here absolutely fantastic it's good against axe because blade mail if he does go for that eventually is not really a problem for you you also just counter him early on into the game you just do enough damage to kill him even through vanguard you can suck off the bear which is useful and you have a good laning stage against ta in general you also buy anti-ta items you can buy yules to kite her out halberd if you want to at some point shiva's ac not even bkb is just fine uh, so you don't get auto attack to death in a stun duration. But yeah, that's uh, all for the draft analysis. Now let's get into the game. All right, now let's enjoy and hop into ILTW's gameplay. Just for a bit of perspective, he ends up going 9-2 and two this game with no BKB. Usually I flame all you guys if you don't buy BKBs. <laughs> uh, but he does not go BKB this game. To be fair, the enemy team has practically no magical damage. I mean, the root goes through BKB. Call goes through BKB. TA just inherently goes through BKB. The only problem is Snap, which, you know, makes sense why he does not go BKB. But nonetheless, let's get into the game. All right, so ILTW is in a very favorable lane. He's an IO Gyro against an Axe. Axe does basically nothing in terms of chip damage to these, like, range-esque heroes, unless he has a Snap that can get him on top of them. Now he does, but the thing is, I will always out-sustain. So what I like about ILTW's gameplay in this game in general is he abuses that. I didn't show you the first three minutes of the game, but I just want you guys to imagine that, essentially, because of the fact that he was with an IO, he consistently took trades that were actually semi-unfavorable. In fact, you'll see he'll, more often than not, throw out rocket barrages that maybe you usually wouldn't. For instance, without an IO here, that's still a decent rocket barrage. 
but for the most part, you'd be casting this spell when you know you're going to get at least three-fourths of the duration off. Once again, that example was, was pretty good. He actually did get three-fourths of it off, and so that is a good Rocket Barrage. But you need to play around your timings. You need to play around the heroes that are in your lane. For instance, I was recently watching a game. A friend of mine was playing a troll warlock lane, and he stayed full HP for about the entirety of the lane, which is bad, because if you're full HP the entire lane, you're not going to win the lane. Why? Because you have heals. If you have heals and you don't use what your heroes do well, then you're not going to win the lane. Now, there's other examples. If your team is completely burst with no heals, then you probably need to all in for kills. Yeah, this is definitely a chip damage lane, and you'll see him playing around that. Just a couple of auto attacks here and there, and leaving it at that. The next play I really love for my LTW is his awareness of potential TPs. So this is one of the most complex things you can actually learn in Dota. So if you're not at this level yet, you're not like, I don't know, pushing towards 6, 7k, this, it's just really hard to execute. I'm going to keep it real with you guys. But it's, it's having the understanding of playing as if there's someone with you when there's no one with you. So here, Miracle is Razor. He is a mid Razor who has TP up right now. And you're going to see this really advanced play where he actually initiates alone into a 2v1. He would typically lose knowing that this, this Miracle Razor is on the way. And that's exactly what we're going to see here. He knows that Miracle can TP in, so he puts down the rocket, clearly makes the call, or they communicate that this is a potential option, and he throws down the ulti. Now, to be fair, even if he was alone, I still think that this ulti is, like, pretty reasonable. Maybe even in this circumstance, he doesn't know that Miracle's coming, and the ulti is just to chip down this axe. But to be fair, Miracle then TPs in, and it sets up for a very easy double kill for them. And so honestly, another point about this clip that makes him good that most players would struggle with is the pure fact that he doesn't actually panic when they run at him. Think about it. How many people when they get run at here would just instantly book it? They'd say, yep, yeah, it's a level seven X. I'm missing some HP, six X, <laughs> and I'm going to die, especially when snap comes, right? Most people just instantly freak out. He doesn't. He knows his limits. He knows Axe doesn't really do that much to him here, frankly, uh, not much at all. So he doesn't panic, he throws down the rocket, when Snap comes, he does back up, but when the rocket connects, he re-engages, and he continues to make a play. The next thing I'd like to discuss is something that you need to develop as a carry player in order to become just like top tier. It really is uh, essential. So in this clip here, he's going to be farming up the small camp, okay, pretty basic stuff. But what I want to say, what you guys need to be able to do is anytime you're farming jungle, it practically needs to just be passive, right? You might be saying, what does that mean, speed? jungling's passive if you find yourself watching the camp you're farming and it's not because you're stacking it you're probably making a mistake right and i do this all the time trust me i catch myself doing this all the time and yes there are examples where uh, you know you have a battle fury and you need to hit the largest creep so that you farm it most efficiently but for the most part you don't actually need to look at the camp right at, at least you shouldn't have to like actively think about the camp and the reason why this is important is because if you do this where every time you farm a camp you catch yourself like like staring at it you're like uh, through a telescope you're looking at cobalt you're like oh you're looking pretty good man you want to give me that cup of wine i'm feeling pretty down if that's the case you're making a mistake right you need to be paying attention to your teammates so what is he paying attention to here he's looking at the minimap and you can clearly see this right the fact that he's looking at the minimap because when axe approaches it only takes him about a second to walk up it's not instant to be fair he actually could have been faster ltw is a noob what, what can i say but the point is it's just so important to be able to have this awareness of, hey, Kuroki's in the jungle. Sure, Kuroki might have made the call. There is comms, obviously. But in pubs, you have to be able to do this passively. I know it seems hard, right? But you have to. Because even in these pro games, if they had to communicate everything, not much would happen. If they had to discuss every play they wanted to make, not much would happen. Most of the communication is like basically subconscious between these players. I know that sounds weird, but I really mean that. The next play that really changes the outcome of this game is this Roshan. I mean, I can ha I can happily say that I would not have made this play. Really, I, I just wouldn't have, um, unless my support calls for it. You know, you have sometimes those really good support players. I just wouldn't have thought I could have. But uh, yeah, he just straight up kills Roche. And the point of this clip, I, I just really want to say, guys, like Roche is a lot weaker than you think. I know that sounds kind of weird. And I say that a lot, that it sounds kind of weird, because Dota's a weird game, but really, it's not that strong. To be fair, right, to be fair, uh, GH does have a medallion, which helps, 
So if you want to take Roshan with your teammates, you should probably buy that item. And also to be fair, he has three kills and 174 CS at the 16 minute mark, uh, 17, which is insane. Um, but just always keep Rosh in mind. Always, always keep it in mind. For instance, I was just playing a ranked game and I had an Ursa, right? So what did I do? And by the way, my team was like doing terrible. We were probably like two or three K net worth behind. I told my team, let's smoke top. I didn't say all of this, but I had this idea and then I just made it basic to them. I said, let's smoke top. The reason for that was because I knew that if we smoke top and got a kill, we could Roche because we have an Ursa and we also had Pangalier 10 times better, right? We could disarm it, Ursa kills it. Um, and that's exactly what happened. We ended up picking off their Animage top. It was a little bit fortunate. He like blinked into us, but yeah, it, it, it super, super worked out. And then we got Roshan and all of a sudden the game just was flipped on its head. We were two, three kid net worth behind and it just completely changed. And so uh, keeping Roche in mind, especially when your team can kill it, even though this game it's, doesn't kind of look like it, but I guess Ag Gyro is better than I thought, um, especially with an IO, so you can spam Rocket Barrage. Yeah, it's just super key to being a better Dota player. The next thing I also want to say is, you know, like as we watch him farming here, nice farming rotations from camp to camp, no downtime, uh, attack moving towards his next camp. You know, I'm not going to say basic stuff, but fundamentals to good farming. I just want to say that, hey, they're not running up to towers with this Aegis. I, I say this a lot. You guys know, if you're if you're an avid fan and you watch the videos a lot, you know I say this all the time. Please don't just run face first in the towers. Most of the time, it does not work. Look at what they do instead. Please, if you can do this in your pubs. Guys, I, I will not quit making videos. I promise. I will not quit making videos until there's a day where I hop into a pub and my team all actively at the same time like not exactly the same time, but like on the relative same time, coordinates a smoke gank in a, in a pub. I, I will not quit playing Dota because even in now that I've like hit about 6.6k on the smurf, even now I'm the only one who calls smokes. I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. It's the best item in the game. It is literally the best item in the game. I There's maybe OBS is slightly better in terms of overall impact. There's nothing more important than smokes in the mid to late game, even early game. They change the way you play the game because, for instance, if they were to make this play with no smoke, where they walk up onto the high ground, it would be horrible. Why? Because they're going to get like two or three man cold when they walk up the hill. But with the smoke, all of a sudden, this quote unquote bad play becomes a good play. Now, unfortunately, they end up missing. Oh, no, they caught him on the edge. Oh, that was so unlucky from Nisha. He got like stuck in the arena. But yeah, all of a sudden, this bad play becomes a good play and they end up catching out the Templar Assassin right? Super good stuff. They catch the TA and they end up taking a really uh, solid fight. They kill the TA, they kill the, the snap, they kill the Eng. They now can transition into a tower. And because the smoke was forward into the enemy jungle and they had pushed the bottom lane right before doing it, it's a super solid maneuver. Yes, it ends up going a little bit poorly. He gets caught out under the tower. Yes, he's playing against Nigma. They're absolute monsters, but you get the point. And next up, I, I think you guys are going to like this, like completely on the opposite end of smokes is not smoking okay right uh the opposite of not uh, of, of smoking is not smoking and that's what we're gonna see here from miracle my man is a psych he didn't even bottle the haste what a savage 400 mana half mana yeah i'm just gonna pick it up and run in this is what happens when you don't smoke and it even happens to pros now i'm not saying you have to smoke 24 7 in dota you literally cannot do that but but when you plan on running into no vision areas that's the key when you plan on running into areas with no vision or areas where they might have a ward, you shouldn't do it because most importantly, your team won't be that close. For instance, right here, look at what Nigma does. Gyrocopter walks to the left to hit a camp. Pretty reasonable. He's the hard carry. Okay. Miracle is initiating. Does anyone see a problem with this class? Yes. They're doing the exact opposite thing and one person is team fighting. Now, there are circumstances where you can try to take a fight to create space for the carry. That's obviously not the plan here, considering they're on the enemy side of the map next to their tier 3, and it's basically going to be a guaranteed 5v5, or at least 4v5, uh, because of how close it is to secret space. Now, this is Miracle basically just playing off adrenaline, right? He's hyped. He's ready to go. He's a human. He makes mistakes. I really do believe that this is a big... And yes, I have hindsight, guys. Trust me, I have hindsight. I don't blame him. I make these mistakes all the time, too. But look... The gyro and the IO are not close. And you might be saying, oh, but they have Relo. Relo is slow. Relo is awkward, right? <laughs> it's very awkward. In fact, you almost never see people Relo 
into like these type of fights. Why? Because where do you go? It's like it's so awkward. And what ends up happening? He gets this link off onto a freaking Enchantress. Oh, whoop de doo And now Enchantress has no damage. And he is, he's, he's just out of position. No mana. And they've got it nothing. All they've done is suck off a, a freaking Ench. And then Mind Control goes in. Matumba Man's an absolute monster, so he gets the fear off before the speeder. And it's just a garbage fight. GH has to link to the Razor, which is not fun. You obviously want to be linked to your Gyro so you can amp all of his magical damage and give him attack speed for Flak. Uh, but that's not what happens here. And then ILTW is like, oh, I gotta go in, guys. And he just dies as well. And so one of the biggest advantages of Smokes is the fact that it makes your team go in at the same exact time. A one or two second difference can change, will change the way a team fight looks. All right. And that's going to be about the end of the game. He finally hits his point of critical mass, which is uh, for Gyrocopter easily or Satanic timing. When you have a DPS item, Axe and Satanic, your hero becomes an absolute monster. Crazy hard to deal with. He also got hella lucky and got um, Paladin Sword. So, so lucky. And uh, yeah, really nice initiation by Mind Control. Catches out the Axe when the Axe initiates. Notice how Nigma didn't go in first on the high ground. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, and the carry didn't dive. Keep that in mind. But it really is a big deal, right? ILTW not diving the high ground. Not going sickle mode. Yes, he has an IO. Yes, he has Satanic with Paladin Sword. But it does not matter. You play it slow. You siege when you can. One of Secret's biggest weaknesses this game is they do not have good poke damage. They don't have a good way of, of making high ground hard. Like a huge reason why high ground is difficult is heroes like Rubik and Winter Wyvern and, and Sniper and Zeus can just chuck out constant long range damage that can't be responded to. And, and it becomes a disaster really quickly. But TA, like their, their team comp doesn't really have that. And meh, not one to support. Impetus is just not really a problem. Snap, meh. TA, you need something to sideblade off of, which often you don't have. Axe has to literally go in, and Lone Druid has to send this bear, which at the, this point in the game is actually quite a risk. And uh, yeah, that's kind of where the game ends, as ILTW cleans up another fight. They uh, they perform really well. I, I love the fact that they're bringing back this IO. It's always funny how heroes go in and out of meta so quickly. Like, a pro team will just win a game with IO, and then they're just like, yep, IO's the secret. We're picking IO. And then IO starts getting banned out because they're like, oh, we really, we don't want to play against this IO. Apparently, it's still good. <laughs> and it goes down this like line. But hey, that's why I love Dota. But nonetheless, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this like in-depth replay analysis. And uh, go sub to the website if you want more of this. I'll see you in the next one. And I'm up. Peace. And that's all. But remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below. And I'm out. Peace.